should see where you are watching from. Here we go. <clears throat> My name is Ben Azadi. I am the best-selling author of four books. My latest book called Keto Flex. And I want to say thank you for being here with me today. Let me know in the chat box where you're watching from. I see Las Vegas in the house. I see Israel in the house. Pretty cool. I see Venice Beach, California, the UK. I see Belgium. I see California. I'm in beautiful Miami Beach, Florida. It's an incredible day. It's about 72 degrees Fahrenheit and the sun is shining. So I saw a few questions roll through. Let's get right down to business. And if you haven't submitted your question yet, now is your opportunity to do so. I saw a question about the keto diet and erectile dysfunction. Is there a link? The answer is typically no, but there can be a link with long-term sustained ketosis and low testosterone or lowering testosterone levels, which potentially can lead to erectile dysfunction. So the goal is not to stay in ketosis long-term for men and women. The goal is to flex in and out uh, and there shouldn't be an issue there. So what I have seen with those guys who stay in ketosis long-term, I see higher levels of the hormone sex binding globulin, sex binding, um, sex hormone binding globulin, excuse me, which typically lowers testosterone, which may lead to that. I, I wouldn't say it's a direct cause though. <clears throat> there was a question about the best sugar replacements, the best sugar replacements that we use inside the Keto Camp Academy would be stevia, pure stevia that's not cut with anything else, pure stevia, pure monk fruit, sugar alcohols like erythritol, swerve, xylitol, those would be good sugar substitutes. What we don't like, what we don't promote are artificial sweeteners like sucralose, aspartame, think of like Splenda, not a fan of those. Austin, Texas in the house, I've been having a lot more bone pain on the left hand, shoulder, curious about that. Yeah, um, there could be a lot of things going on there. I would look at your glucose levels. I don't know what your glucose levels are, but maybe get like an A1C test done. And red light therapy could potentially help with bone pain. Uh, red light therapy is called photobiomodulation. So I have some red light panels here. You might wanna use some red light therapy that could help with some bone pain. The company that I have that I use is from Bond Charge. If you go to Bond Charge, dot com slash keto camp you could check that out and i used uh you could use the coupon code keto camp for a nice discount hello coach becky good to see coach becky and coach elena in the house by the way austin texas i'm going to be in austin texas in april speaking doing a keynote lecture at keto con so i would love for you to join me i see you're in austin if anybody is in texas or wants to go to texas go to ketocon.org Check out that event. It's going to be awesome. And my coupon code for $50 off your ticket price is Keto Camp. Question came here from Kathy. I am using a CGM, which is a continuous glucose monitor. The last three months I've been using it. When I exercise, I get a rise in glucose, then a drop to around baseline. This last month, I noticed that I'm getting a small rise and a large dip in glucose, then back to baseline. Should I be concerned? All points are within normal range, but it is a steady change in the pattern. I'm a low carb, 20 to 30 grams a day, and I'm not diabetic. That's actually a perfectly normal response. When you exercise, you want actually glucose to temporarily increase, and it happens for two primary reasons. So if you're looking at your glucose, whether you're wearing a continuous glucose monitor or, or, or finger pricking and you exercise, you're going to see that go up. Um, and this is the reason why, the two reasons why. Number one, you are exercising and your body has a higher energy demand. So you store sugar, you store uh, sugar in your muscle and liver cells. This is called your glycogen stores. So naturally, when your body is demanding more energy because you're exercising, your liver and your muscle cells will actually release some of that glucose to be used for quick energy usage. And you might see a little increase in your glucose. That's perfectly normal and actually really healthy because you're depleting those glycogen stores. The second reason is you also activate cortisol when you work out. The adrenal glands will produce extra cortisol to give you energy and glucose follows cortisol. So you might see glucose go up for that reason too. But to your point, it goes back down the baseline when you finish exercising. So I would not be concerned with that response. It's a beautiful response. When I wore my CGM, it's exactly what I saw. And, um, you know, the higher the demand of the exercise, you might see the higher 
the glucose spike. And again, that's very different than a glucose spike from eating food. This is a normal response. Any plans on coming to Southern California, Jennifer? Um, nothing in my calendar, but that is always, you know, uh, going to change. I would love to speak in California. So if there's a keto event or a health event, let me know about it and let's do it. Is cortisol bad? No, unless it's chronically elevated. Cortisol, just like insulin, is not bad unless it's chronically elevated. Cortisol is important for energy. You have this natural circadian rhythm. As a matter of fact, I'm reading a great book right now called The uh, Diabetes Circadian Code. I think that's what it's called by Dr. Sanchin Panda and it talks all about these different rhythms. And um, cortisol is actually great for energy and it's just you don't want to have high chronic levels of cortisol. Dory, I can't get to see you on here. Looking forward to seeing you again in person. Yeah, Tina. Hey, Tina. I would love to be in SoCal. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Deb. Hey, Zubrata in India. Hey, Paulette in North Carolina. Good morning, Mary. Hello, Judy. I know you're in Iowa. I see UK, Texas in the house, California. Zubrata says, I am on a ketogenic diet for the last one and a half year. My HbA1c is below 5.8. My morning blood sugar is high to the tune of 140 to 150. Yeah, um, I don't see a question there, but I would say, what was it before you started keto, your A1C? It's probably trending down. Uh, morning glucose is really high, and it sounds like you just still have insulin resistance and you're working on it, so just keep up, keep up the good work. How do women raise testosterone? <clears throat> Same way men would do it, uh, Amy Sanders. So how do you raise testosterone naturally? There's different... Supplements you can take, herbs and compounds like shilajit, maca, um, boron, and a few others. So there's a great product. Actually, I have it right here. It's good timing. A great product called Upgraded Tea. Uh, this is my favorite natural testosterone boosting supplement. Um, I love this supplement because they test for heavy metals and contaminants, and it's free of that. And it has... Um, LG 100, which is a root extract that has purified shilajit. It has grapeseed extract. It has cre green coffee bean and maca extra. Um, so this would be good for men and women. If you want to get this, you can get this over at upgradedformulas.com and then use the coupon code ketosis for 15% off. But what are some other ways to raise T levels? Strength training is great at raising testosterone levels, especially squats and weighted squats. So I would definitely throw, throw that into the routine. Shoulder press is also great for testosterone production. There are receptor sites for testosterone in the shoulder uh, area. So uh, sh weighted shoulder press, quality sleep, getting about at least two hours of deep sleep each night, great for testosterone production, great for growth hormone production. Intermittent fasting, believe it or not, could actually really help with testosterone and growth hormone. If you want to learn more about the sleep component, this Friday, uh, February 10th, I'm releasing a brand new podcast with Matt Gallant from Bioptimizers, and we took a deep dive into sleep. Uh, we go over, he, he spent about $45,000 figuring out how to optimize sleep, and we outline what worked for him, what didn't work for him. So sleep is very important, especially if you're looking to boost testosterone levels. I would recommend watching or listening to the interview when it comes out this Friday. All right, next question is from Brandon Markham here on Insta, uh, YouTube. How to get in tune with satiety, hunger hormones when on keto? Follow your circadian rhythm, okay? That, that is the best way. We, The brain, the body, the hormones, we, we, we are hardwired to follow our natural circadian rhythm. Every cell, every organ has its unique circadian rhythm. So I'm gonna give you some general protocols to help you get in sync with the circadian rhythm. And Coach Becky teaches this a lot in our Keto Camp Academy group. Number one, morning sunshine, morning sunlight. Uh, get outside, take off the sunglasses, get sunshine going through your eyes, get sunshine touching your skin, 20 minutes or so would suffice. So morning sunlight exposure. And then throughout your day, as much as possible, try to get 
you know, bouts of sunlight exposure and then protect your circadian rhythm, protect the brain from artificial light. Uh, as you can see, I have a whole bunch of artificial light around me, but what am I wearing? I'm wearing blue light blocking glasses to help that out. So it's not interfering with my circadian rhythm. Um, you could get the ones that I'm wearing from Bond Charge, bondcharge.com slash keto camp. Keto camp is the discount code. And then you want to make sure you're eating as m um, most of your calories earlier in the day. Okay. Dr. Sachin Panda makes the case that we are better at processing carbohydrates in the morning and having more green leafy vegetables, cooked foods, and meats and proteins later on in the afternoon, early evening. So you might want to follow along with that. But I would say, give yourself at least five hours of fasting and digestion before bedtime. So if you go to bed at 11 p.m., the kitchen is closed at, uh, what is that, 6 p.m., okay? So that'll help fine-tune this circadian rhythm, which will help synchronize these hunger signals. Something else you can do is focus on protein at your meals. Protein is very satiating. It activates amazing hormones and chemicals such as cholecystokinin, leptin, peptide YY. These are hormones. These are chemicals that signal to your stomach, to your brain, your full put down the fork. Uh, and then the last piece there in terms of your satiety hormones would be get quality sleep. So many studies show if you don't get quality sleep, I'm not talking about the quantity. When somebody tells me I sleep fine, I get eight hours of sleep each night, that doesn't mean anything to me. I need to know, is it quality sleep? Quality is very Im more important than quantity. It needs to be two hours of deep sleep, two hours of REM sleep. Those are great targets right there. And if you're not getting quality sleep, studies show you're going to have higher levels of the hunger hormone leptin the next day, higher levels of cortisol. And it's going to just make you, it's going to cross up those satiety signals and then make sure your electrolytes are up as well. Cause sometimes a, an electrolyte deficiency could mix up those signals as well. The T supplement website. Hey, Sean, you good to see you again is upgradedformulas.com. And the coupon code is ketosis. Monica, good to see your beautiful face in the Bahamas. I see Auckland, New Zealand. What time is it for you, Cheryl? That's, it's probably early for you. Besides your amazing book, Keto Flex, says Karen, can you recommend any other cookbooks for meal ideas? Yeah, I'm actually interviewing Anna Vicino today. Anna Vicino has a, a few great cookbooks. I would recommend hers. I've also interviewed the Salmon Queen as well, um, who has some great cookbooks. Her name is Gigi Ashworth. And then I would recommend Chef Michael. He has some great cookbooks. Um, Michael Silverstein. So those would be great resources for you. The next question is from Rob Gin Arroyos. When trying to lose 60 pounds of fat, do calories matter? I could easily eat lots of fatty meat, so weight would not come off. If you're trying to lose weight, focus on health because weight loss is a side effect of good health. So calories do matter always. Calories always matter. However, they're not important. So if you focus more so on protein, Rob, instead of the fat, you're going to feel more satiated and you might end up eating less, but we're not focusing on the calories. So keep focusing on the health, Rob. If you want to lose weight, quality sleep, movement, build some muscle, get that circadian rhythm in check, um, focus on protein, stay away from vegetable oils and seed oils, focus on inflammation, and you're going to get that. That way it will just come off naturally. And the cool thing about doing it this way, it might not happen overnight or rapid weight loss, which is fine, but it will come off for good. There's a difference between focusing on fat loss and maybe getting it off, but it could come back versus doing it the right way. And we teach this in our academy. We'd love to have you, by the way. Yep, you do, Sibrata. We all have glycogen stores. It's uh, stored sugar in your liver or muscle. And even if you're not eating 
a lot of carbs, you could manufacture glucose from protein and fat. Hillary, I had a hair mineral test from upgraded formulas and an analysis that revealed I had high sodium and potassium. It's a great test, by the way. They said my cells were not utilizing the two and recommended a P5P. Have you heard of this P5P? Yeah, I've, I haven't used P5P before, but I love the test and I trust those who are doing those consultations because I know Barton Scott, my friend who owns the company, trains them. So I would heed their advice. Personally, if it was me, I would heed their advice. Um, just keep in mind, the hair mineral analysis is a great test for looking at minerals and deficiencies and ratios, but I wouldn't pay attention to the um, heavy metal section. Uh, Jesse, the name of the test is called Upgraded Formulas Hair Mineral Analysis Testing Kit. I've done it. It's a great test. We did a masterclass in the academy with that, by the way. Um, and the coupon code, I believe, is ketosis for, for that test, 15% off. Yeah, Paula, I'm not sure what's happening there. You might want to add in some HCL or digestive enzymes and see if it helps. Rita, they make blue light blocking glasses with prescription, so you don't have to put it over other glasses. So th this company, Bond Charge, will make they could you could put your prescription in them, so you don't have to put it over. Um, bondcharge.com slash keto camp, and then keto camp is the discount code. How do I learn about keto and what is a keto food? Keto foods are, are going to be protein and fat. Um, how do you learn about it? I have a free guide uh, for anybody who, who wants to learn. It's called the Keto Kickstart Guide. You can download it for free over at ketokickstartguide.com. I also have a ton of videos on our YouTube channel, Keto Camp on YouTube. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, get on there. That's our main platform. Cameroon in the house. Hello. Wanted to know, I wanted to let you know after intermittent fasting and keto, my A1C went from 5.7 to 5.4. Let's go, Jennifer. Congratulations. It's awesome. Keep up the great work. It's amazing. Cindy, you can't get rid of sweets. That's a tough one. Uh, I know we had spoken about that before. I would start, I would start with, um, well, not start, but I would focus right now on your sleep environment and that circadian rhythm. Because typically when your circadian rhythm is off, you tend to feel hungry and have cravings. So Coach Becky in our Keto Camp Academy is the one to work with on that. She's incredible, Cindy. Uh, we could definitely coach you on that. We'd optimize that circadian rhythm and, and focus on your sleep, and that'll help with the cravings. Do I have fruit? Is that a question that came here? Uh, don't you eat fruit? I do eat fruit, yeah. I eat fruit on my Keto Flex days. What do I think about saunas? I love saunas. Saunas are terrific. It's great for vasodilation, great for nitric oxide. Uh, could help with a little bit of some detoxification. Helps with heart health and cardiovascular health. Helps with the lymphatic system. The challenge, though, is getting to a sauna uh, because they're very expensive. You might have to go to a facility. So what I do, I personally have a sauna blanket. I actually have it right down there. And I get in that for 30, 45 minutes, and I'll listen to an audio book at the same time, and I'll be in my sauna blanket. Um, the one I use is from Bond Charge, same company that I have the glasses from in the red light. So bondcharge.com slash keto camp. It's affordable. It's convenient. The coupon code is uh, keto camp at checkout. Next question I see here is about lipedema. Yes, keto can help but also working on the, on the uh, lymphatic system and uh, you know, doing some things to find root causes of why you have lipedema. So the answer is yes. If you could use keto to lower inflammation and get the lymphatic moving, it's going to help with lipedema for sure. Keto flex days are having intentional higher healthy carb days to flex adiketosis after you've done the work. It's the fourth pillar in my four pillar approach that we teach inside our Keto Camp Academy. Uh, 
I saw some more. How often should you keto flex? After you have done the work and, and uh, upgraded your metabolism and done keto for about three to four months straight, then we practice keto flexing. And how you do keto flexing is very different depending on a man versus a woman, a woman who has a menstrual cycle versus a woman who has uh, who is postmenopausal. And we teach that in the academy. Thoughts on Asana to sit in if I have feelings with mercury? Yeah, you're not going to pull from that, Judy. You're totally fine. I would say doing like upstream detox the way that I teach it, um, you would have to get the fillings out before that. But with the sauna, it's not going to pull from your fillings. Uh, so nothing to worry about there. Actually, it could help. You might want to take a couple of binders, Judy, like systemic formulas bind, four capsules, like 30 minutes before you go into that sauna. That could help. David says, good news, Ben, as my prostate cancer PSA blood test has come down so much since being on intermittent fasting and keto. My doctor, my cancer doctor has told me if the next MRI scan is good, he will discharge me. Oh, David, that's awesome. Holding on to that vision that the scan is perfect and your doctor discharges you. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. Proud of you. It's a huge victory. Rowena. Lost 40 pounds after six months of low carb, high fat, and my A1C dropped from 7.2 to 5.6. Awesome. But I still have belly fat, can't get rid of. What should I do? Time to flex. Flexing is the solution. Um, so there's a couple of ways you can learn flexing. My book, Keto Flex, gives you the general rules to follow. So if you, ha you haven't gotten the book yet, go to ketoflexbook.com. If you want, everything outlined for, outlined for you in a step-by-step -step system and you want me and our coaches to coach you on it, then the academy would be your best option over at ketocampacademy.com. So um, flexing would be the name of the game for you. Jane, I suffer from primary Raynaud syndrome. Fingers going white and numb. Do you have any experience with keto helping reduce these symptoms? Yeah, Jane, I don't know if you know my story, but I, I have Raynaud's too. And I've had it for so many years. Um, my Raynaud's used to be so bad. Uh, Raynaud's, by the way, if you don't know what that is, it's an autoimmune condition where you lack blood flow to your extremities, typically your fingers and your toes. And any exposure to cold temperatures makes your fingers go white and purple. And that used to happen to me almost every single day. Now I would say with ketosis and fasting and also heavy metal detox, all the things that I teach, I barely, I rarely get Raynaud symptoms unless I have a, like a stressful day. So the answer is yes. Absolutely. All autoimmune conditions can be helped if you could find ways to lower inflammation. That's exactly what we teach. Uh, there is hope there. You can reverse Raynaud's or you could put it at remission or, or at the very least, um, you, at the very least, you could make sure you're not getting all these flare-ups every single day. You could limit the flare-ups. Cornelia, good to see you on here. Love that you always join us. Hypothyroidism. Again, that is, I don't know if it's Hashimoto's and if it's more autoimmune, but um, go check out my interview with Dr. Rebecca Warren, Dr. Rebecca Warren on YouTube. So just type in Dr. Rebecca Warren, Keto Camp, and we talk all about that. We talk about keto flexing, heavy metal detox. We also did a masterclass in the academy all about that, by the way. Yeah, and proper circadian rhythm for sure could help with Raynaud's. It could pretty much help with any condition. Rome, Italy in the house. Hey, Roby, always a pleasure listening to you. Thank you so much for joining from Italy. I've always wanted to go to Italy. Been on keto for four weeks and only lost the first three weeks. Been on keto for four weeks and only lost weight. I imagine you're saying for the first three weeks could not have a gallbladder affect things. Well, first of all, don't focus on weight loss. Weight loss, the scale changing is not the most important metric. That will happen over time as your body is getting healthier and healthier. Focus on non-scale victories. And we teach this inside the Keto Camp Academy. Energy levels, how your clothes fit, take measurements, body fat. Now you asked about the gallbladder. Not having a gallbladder definitely can or definitely will impact your keto protocol because there's no gallbladder, there's no storage house for the bile acids. So your liver has to make up for the absence of the gallbladder. So I would recommend going on YouTube and typing in Keto Camp No Gallbladder. And I have a, a video that's five ways, five steps to doing keto without a gallbladder. 
Jordan Mendoza. What is up, my brother? Good to see you on here, dude. Happy, happy Wednesday to you. Love your work, my friend. I don't know, Amir. I got to check. I would say this. At my highest, my body fat was 34%. That was when I was 24 years old. So I was obese. I was 34% body fat. And then at my lowest, I was down at, to 6% body fat. I'm definitely not at 6% body fat now. I'm, in, I'm probably in the teens. But um, I went from 34% to 6% in nine months. It was a little extreme and aggressive and not the way I would teach it. But uh, I'm not sure. I, I need a test. Any tips for losing the last bit of belly fat for a male, says Tony. I do keto flexing some carnivore. I am, I think you mean intermittent fasting and longer fasting. Can't seem to get past this point. Yeah, a few things you can do. You could try red light therapy. You could try cold exposure. Put on lean muscle mass. or do some strength training workouts. And then fine tune your sleep to get more deep sleep. Other things you can do is green tea on an empty stomach. Green tea has catechins in it, which could help with belly fat. Um, strength training in the morning on an empty stomach could help as well. Just keep in mind, you know, your losing weight is anti-survival and the body wants to survive. So we have to keep tricking it, keep adapting, keep changing things up. Like a great, all great personal trainers, all great fitness coaches understand that in order for their client to continue to get results, they need to continue to change up the workout. Same thing with you guys watching this. Always change up the routine. If you're doing the same intermittent fasting schedule, day in, day out, change it up. Have no day, have some days where you're no, not fasting. If you've been in ketosis long term, flex out. If you want to stay in ketosis, change your keto foods, create more diversity in your gut, it, add in some strength training, optimize your deep sleep. So there's several ways to do this. Just the name of the game is to mix things up, keep the body adapting, keep the body guessing. And um, remember this, adaptation is the name of the game. When you force adaptation, good cells get stronger and bad cells do not adapt. Everybody type that in the chat box. Good cells get stronger, bad cells don't adapt. Type it in. Good cells get stronger, bad cells do not adapt. Paulette says, Josephine Barbarino video was amazing. What an incredible story. She's a gift, her teachings and testimony. She's amazing. I love what she's done in Switzerland. It's super cool. If you didn't listen to that interview or watch it on YouTube with Josephine Barbarino that came out two days ago, she got off almost all of her meds. I think she was on 20 different medications. Now she's only on one for thyroid with keto and fasting. She reversed type 2 diabetes. It's absolutely incredible. I see you, Janice. Good cells get stronger, bad cells don't adapt. Thank you. I see you, Murdog. Mur Good job. I see you, Craig. Good job. So inspiring, Jesse. Yeah, she's awesome. Thank you, Cornelia. I see that. Testing recommendations for food allergies or food sensitivities. Jolene, I'm not a big fan of uh, food sensitivity testing. Oh, we have my friend, the biohacking, the biohack lab. Thank you for joining. I love y'all. Y'all are um, ever in Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You want to check out the biohack lab. What's your website? Is it the biohack lab .com? But they, I'm about to head over there in March, do some cool things with them. They've got an amazing clinic with incredible biohacking tools. My friend Misha told me all about it. I can't wait to go hang out with you all, but I met you at the, uh, biohacking congress but they're on instagram at the biohack lab if you want to send them or you want to follow them they're doing great things but back to your question on food sensitivity testing i'm not a big fan of it the gut is oh the the um here's why you could do a food sensitivity test today and it might show oh you're sensitive to avocados you're sensitive to egg yolks you're sensitive to peppers and then you know let's say you don't change anything and then you do the same test in seven days and then the avocado might have improved and some other foods pop up. It's always changing. The gut microbiome is always changing. By the way, the website is thebiohacklab.com. Everybody go check that out. So I would prefer doing a stool test. And the stool test, the company that I use is from um, Vibrant Labs, Vibrant Wellness Labs. And they have a great test called the Gut Zoomer. The Gut Zoomer is a stool test. So it analyzes your stool. It gives you a diversity score. It tells you what different bacteria you have. 
that would be my go-to test. You do need a practitioner to order it, but it's called the Gut Zoomer from Vibrant Labs. Tony says, is it more important to get good deep in REM versus total? I generally only get six to six and a half hours of sleep a night, but three to four hours is deep in REM. Those are good numbers. Yeah, it's more important to get more deep in REM than total. And it sounds like you're getting three to four of deep in REM. How much is split and like how much is deep out of the three to four hours and how much is REM? What's the, what's the ratio there? But those, those sound like great numbers, by the way. You're, work, you're welcome, Jolene. My pleasure. Instagram, if you had questions that were up on the, on the thread here, um, resubmit them. The user interface for Instagram is not user-friendly. It's hard to go back up and get them all versus, you know, YouTube and Facebook. Yeah. Hey, Sally. Sally says, the Aura Ring is amazing and it helps me figure out sleep. Aura Ring is fantastic. That's what I have here, uh, which is a sleep ring. Um, we do have a $50 off code if you want to get an aura ring to get that code, just email us support at ketocamp.com camp with a K. What are your thoughts on air frying food? I don't see any reckon anything mentioned in the Academy. Uh, I am loving my air fried ribeye air frying is definitely better than, um, frying with oils, but it's still frying. So it's not going to be the optimal way to cook food but I do like it as a, a valuable option. So definitely I, I would definitely, I would do it. I, I personally don't use an air fryer, but I would do it on certain things. Just don't get into the habit of frying every, every single food. Um, <clears throat> so I would use it, but it's not my preferred method. If that makes sense. I keep waiting. I keep waking up one to two hours earlier than I like any ideas. Why I would get an or ring and, and look at what's happening. Um, it, it could be a, um, could be an airway issue. I actually have an amazing interview being released on the Keto Camp podcast on Monday, February, what is that? February 13th with Dr. Michelle Jorgensen. And we talk a lot about that. What ha you know, breathing, your breathing pathway is so important, your airway. And typically when you don't get adequate oxygen, your body is going to go in a cortisol sympathetic response and it wakes you up. So it could be a breathing issue. So when that interview comes out, I would check it out. But the aura ring would be great at looking. Okay, so you have an aura ring. So um, I would see if that's the only time you're waking up or are there are more white dots, white dashes there that show you wake up. But you could experiment with high, um, high dose melatonin. You could experiment with magnesium. You could experiment with changing your sleep environment. But I would explore the breathing thing. I mouth tape. I use mouth tape at night, which forces me to breathe through my nose, my nostrils, which is optimal when you're sleeping. <clears throat> How to help energy levels that are down on keto despite doing clean keto and intermittent fasting, 18.6. Hey, Sarita. Yeah, I would recommend maybe trying some L-carnitine, 500 milligrams of L-carnitine twice per day. And then even some exogenous ketones could help like kinetic exogenous ketones or ketone IQ. Your body's still in the um, ad adapting phase and typically that, that might happen. So you might want to just add in those couple things to help ramp things up. And I will also explore your sleep as well to make sure your sleep is good. I have heard of the alkaline diet, Martin. I am not a fan of it. I think there's a lot of claims being made. Y you don't want your you know, there's no such thing as an alkaline food, by the way. I think the highest alkaline food, I forget, I have it in my notes. Let's see. I have to go to my notes. You want your gut to be acidic. So I'm not a fan of alkaline diets. I'm not a fan of alkaline water. I think it's bogus. Kelly, get to see you on here. Hormones off, wanting to get tested. Is your blood work all inclusive or can we just get the sex hormones tested? Is a Dutch test better? If you want to test hormones, the Dutch test is the best test for hormones, Kelly. If you want to get specific blood markers, then just email us, support at ketocamp.com with the specific blood markers you want. And we could see if we could get each of them for you. 
We'd be happy to do that for you, Kelly. Are two ounces of raw of macadamia nuts per day okay or too much? No, it's totally fine. It's not a lot, Amir. It's totally fine. Yeah, Tracy, I would recommend with your blood pressure issues, I would recommend you check out my interview I did with Dr. Nathan Bryan all about nitric oxide. There could be a connection there with nitric oxide levels and your symptoms. So I'm actually having dinner with him tonight, not Dr. Nathan Bryan. So um, it's a Keto Camp podcast. Just type in, or it's on YouTube too, Dr. Nathan Bryan Keto Camp and learn about nitric oxide. I think that may be the missing piece for you. Why do you eat meat that is very low life force? Because I feel damn good when I eat meat. Um, and I feel full of life. <laughs> That's why. And my blood markers look good. Diane Attell, I've been doing keto and intermittent fasting for more than two years, but my blood sugars have been going up ever since. My fasting blood sugar is 100. Um, I don't know if you've been doing keto and intermittent fasting strict for two years and how aggressive your fasting has been, but I would, I would mix things up and throw in some keto flex days and I would throw in some uh, less fasting and more feasting. Can you provide link to hormone YouTube? What do you mean, Shania? I'm not sure what you meant. What's YouTube? I love that you're loving the Academy, Kelly. Thank you so much. We love to have you in the Academy. We are here to support you. I'm going to answer a couple more questions. And then I'm going to go work out before my interviews later this afternoon. Keto Flex Day is an intentional, higher, healthy carb day where we implement that after you've done keto for three to four months. My book, Keto Flex, behind me, talks all about that. your interview someone about hormones. Is it the thyroid hormones? That's Dr. Rebecca Warren. The nitric oxide is um, Dr. Nathan Bryan. The best magnesium to use. I rotate between upgraded formulas, nano, um, upgraded formulas, upgraded magnesium, and by optimizers, um, magnesium breakthrough. Those are my go-to. Susan, hey, I was plant-based for years. I am now eating lots of animal protein. It's changed my health in so many ways. Yeah, same. <laughs> I was vegan for a year and a half. It did not suit me well. It did not suit me well. I'm going to get to one more question here. Who's it going to be? Submit it. Okay, here's the question. How many grams of carbs do you eat on a flex day? Between 100 and 150 total grams of carbs. And you want to make sure it comes from healthy carbohydrates. So I have, a, I have a keto blueprint. It's called the Keto Camp Blueprint, where it has a list of healthy carbs for a flex day. If you go to ketocampblueprint.com, camp with the K, that you can download for free. Shania, check out my interviews with Dr. Mindy Pels. Dr. Mindy Pels, all about that. Uh, just go type in YouTube, Keto Camp, Dr. Mindy Pels. Oh, I have one more thing. I'm going to be doing, um, this Friday, I'm going to be doing an Ask Us Anything podcast interview with Cynthia Thurlow, the amazing, the incredible Cynthia Thurlow. She is the host of the Everyday Wellness podcast. She has a TEDx lecture on intermittent fasting with over, I think, over 12 million views now. She's a dear friend of mine. And we're going to be answering your questions on the podcast, recording it, and releasing it for you all to get the answers, uh, at least as many questions as possible. So I do have a link for that. If you want to jot your questions on YouTube, here's the link. Um, unfortunately, I, I can't put it on TikTok or the, re the other platform. So if you want that link to submit your questions for me and Cynthia, just email, email me support at ketocamp.com and say, hey, can I get the link to submit the question for Ben and Cynthia? And Alina will give you that link. Alina, I got to get you that link, but we'll get it over to you. So there you go. Flexing is going to be dependent on different goals and uh, different health history. So we would have to review that with you uh, in our academy to determine what's best. 
All right, my friends. Thank you for joining me today. I've got vitamin G gratitude for you. And I uh, hope you join me next Wednesday, same time, 12 p.m. Eastern time. In the meantime, go subscribe to the Keto Camp Podcast available on all podcast platforms and go subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Keto Camp on YouTube. Thank you, the Biohack Lab. I appreciate y'all. All right, everybody, have an amazing day. Um, talk to you all very soon. Bye.